All right, good morning. Uh, I'm going to give you some of the latest updates, and if you keep track of us, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. What that means is we do these videos. Has everybody seen the videos on the Internet? Okay. So if you've all seen the videos, those videos happen like we're doing this morning. And this morning I think we're gonna, you're going to find out some new stuff that you did not know. And uh, just the other day I got a telephone call from one of my patients from 11 years ago. And uh, he's done great. He's really happy. He had surgery a long time ago. But he's developed problems with kidney stones what are called calcium oxalate kidney stones, which are pretty common. And uh, so I have gotten some latest updates. I talked to a urologist and looking at a few things. And so today I'm going to give you the latest research on calcium oxalate stones, which are very common, not just in um, our patients, but across the United States for all kinds of people. So you might want to stay up to date on this and other stuff in the future. So like next week, I might find out something else. So you can keep up to date on these new research findings by subscribing to our YouTube channel. And that means every time a new video gets updated, you get the latest, which we think is valuable to you because, for example, I'm going to tell you about some pretty interesting new stuff which I'll bet you a nickel you don't know about and it could be helpful and so uh, ten years from now I'll probably still be in this room videotaping <laughs> and this is me saying hi to myself ten years in the future hey Dr. Rutledge are you still doing this? Okay. Uh, but there'll be new stuff well no new things and how can we keep in touch with you? Well, a passive way, if you keep your email address, is just subscribe to our YouTube videos. So this is a pitch for you to kind of log on to YouTube and stay up to date. Of course, you can go to our website and read the latest things there. And we do have little tricks and things there. But the YouTube videos right now give us updates that's easy for you to understand. They're kind of uh, translated from the medicalese and the research um, languages so that our patients can use them. And what we want to talk about this morning is kidney stones, okay? Um, kidney stones are extremely common. Millions of people every year suffer from kidney stones um, and they're made worse and more likely to occur after the bypass, okay? The vast majority of kidney stones are calcium oxalate stones. So if you understand and remember from high school chemistry, sodium chloride is the two ions that are linked together. And then as the water goes out of the sodium chloride in the salt water, it can form a crystal. And that's salt that you have on the table. It's sodium plus chloride. They link together and they actually form crystals. Well, inside of your urine, two particular molecules, the calcium ion and something called oxalate, can form crystals and those crystals then can form stones and those stones then can hurt like the devil. They can actually lead to kidney failure, infection, hydronephrosis, uh, all kinds of terrible complications. They're pretty common but there's also some things we know about them that can help prevent them and help treat them. So we want to alert you to some of the new research on that this morning, talk about that a little bit and then help you. First of all, there's some simple things that help cause kidney stones or cause kidney stones and get in trouble. And there's some simple things you can do to prevent them. So you may have heard the number one thing to help prevent kidney stones is drink lots of fluid, particularly water. But lots of fluid is very helpful because imagine putting one drop of water on a big solid block of salt going to be tough to dissolve that. Throw it in the ocean and the whole thing dissolves. So what we want to do in a simplistic manner is dissolve your kidney stones or the reverse of that, we actually want to prevent them from occurring in the first place. And a technique for doing that is to dilute your urine. So that means that stones would be less likely to form. So probably the number one recommendation from urologists and things like that is really simple, which is stay hydrated. 
And a lot of our patients get out, they think, oh, I'm normal, I can skip this, I can do a lot of things, and they uh, forget some basics. And after the MGB, you know, everybody, we've got given you Gatorade this morning, and so everybody drink up. <laughs> Because who knows, this talk could go on a long time, and we don't want you to eat a kidney stone while I'm talking. Um, let's see. Um, another thing is you can look at your diet. Okay, and this is pretty simple, but again, people get off, they forget, and they say, I, I can do anything I want, I'm normal. I used to be heavy, I used to be a diabetic, I used to have all these complications. Now I'm 150 pounds less, my diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, and things are gone, I'm normal. Remember, that's not the deal. We don't offer normal. We hope we offer better and healthier, but we also offer that only if you take good care of your new MGB. So there are several things in your diet that can help protect you from kidney stones. One is higher fiber, okay? So and the increased fiber in your diet, whole wheat, oat bran, beans, whole wheat cereals, carrots, green leafy vegetables, things like that, those are generally helpful. Um, foods like beef, pork, and poultry may increase the risk slightly, so you'll want to eat them in moderation. And generally our patients will do that, but occasionally we get people who are just, you know, kind of eating nothing but uh, very high meat content diet, and that's been associated with increased kidney stones. Now here's a funny thing. Remember the stones that we're talking about are a combination of the ion molecule calcium and this molecule called oxalate. Okay? So if you think about it, for years we thought common sense, if calcium oxalate in the urine is a problem, then what should we recommend to our patients as far as what to eat? Well, common sense for a long time told us, eat less calcium. That would be wrong. Wrong. So, those of you who listened to the video and stopped just a second ago, turn it back on. We used to advise, urologists used to advise, less calcium in the diet, and now research shows the opposite is the effect. And let me see if I can explain the physiology of that trick. When we eat, certain foods like nuts and spinach and chocolate have high amounts of oxalate. So in your diet, you want to eat those in moderate or lower quantities. High oxalate foods, less in your diet, means less in your gut. When oxalate gets into your gut, it can be absorbed. If it's absorbed, then we've got a problem because humans cannot metabolize the oxalate molecule. So it spins around a couple of times, gets filtered out by the kidney, and thrown out in the urine. So far, so good. But if there's a lot of calcium in the urine and a lot of oxalate in the urine at the same time, then you can get kidney stones. So one thing to do is eat less oxalate. So that means moderate amounts of chocolate and nuts and spinach and other foods that have a high oxalate content. You'll want to pay a little attention to that in your diet. But number two, let's imagine that you say, well, I can't live my whole life without chocolate. I've got to have some chocolate. I mean, let's not be crazy here. What if in your gut we could trap that oxalate and prevent it from being absorbed? Then you wouldn't have to get rid of it in your urine. And remember, we told you that mixing calcium plus oxalate forms a bond and then it can crystallize. So a trick that can keep oxalate from being absorbed into the gut is to eat calcium when you eat your chocolate. So how could we do that? Give me a second. Chocolate plus calcium. Build chocolate. Uh, hot fudge sundae? Well, not saying you do that all the time, but... Anyway, so dietary calcium may be good, which is kind of a little bit paradoxical in protecting against kidney stones. Especially if you're going to be eating something that has a bit of oxalate in it. You'll want to be heads up 
and trying to have some dairy products or something like that at that time. Okay? And so if you mix that, you can come up with some kind of tasty treats. What do you do if you're lactose intolerant? Ah, lactose intolerance, very common after surgery. We have lots of videos on that, and I've talked about it a bunch of times, but I won't talk about it on this video. So what could be the calcium you put with your chocolate? I, as I say, I have a lot of stuff on that, but I'm not going to derail this talk right this minute. But I'll come back and talk about that, because it's really important. It's really easy for our patients to get dairy foods that don't have lactose. They can buy the milk that says lactose-free. Or you could buy plain yogurt. Plain yogurt, we're going to talk about in a minute, is tremendous because the bacteria that form the yogurt usually metabolize the lactose. But there's a trick. American companies have noticed that you and I don't like to eat sour milk. That's yogurt. We don't like sour milk. So they have fixed yogurt. Now, if you notice, have you had Yoplait recently? Tastes like pudding. Because they've mixed a bunch of stuff in it, oftentimes with a lot of lactose. So our patients will often come to me and say, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I can't eat yogurt. It gives me upset stomach just like it had lactose in it because they've added a bunch of milk solids which has lactose and sugar and high fructose corn syrup and stuff like that so it tastes just like pudding so the solution for eating yogurt to help protect your gut and to get in your calcium is to eat plain yogurt that doesn't have all those additions but I have a batch of information about that. There's a bunch of videos on it, probably 10 videos about it, but I don't want to talk about that too much because this one people are co coming to probably want to hear more about kidney stones because that's what we're talking about. But that's a good question, but it's just not for this video if that's okay. That's okay. Sorry. I hope I wasn't rude about that. No. But don't no, you no. dare ask another question. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so back on kidney stones, we want to get dietary calcium in. Dietary calcium is good. What about taking extra calcium? As you know, all of my patients are supposed to be taking post-operative Tums as a calcium supplement. Again, imagine you're going to eat chocolate. Imagine you're going to eat chocolate and you say, I know there's oxalate in there, I don't want kidney stones, maybe I could take a little Tums with them. And that's a reasonable thing to think about, but dietary calcium is probably better. There is some research, and uh, we published this online and sent it to our Facebook and our Twitter feeds and all this stuff, where they looked at women who ate dietary calcium, that is in dairy products, or women who took calcium supplements. And they looked at 95,000 women over 10 years. And the women who took the calcium supplements had a slight increase in risk of kidney stones. The ones who had dietary calcium was lower. So most important really for you is that dietary calcium, ideally in the form of yogurt or cheese or something like that. And if you want to drink milk or ice cream or something with lacta lactose in it, then you're going to need to add probably the lactate or lactase enzyme that you can buy at the grocery store. So that's where the surgery has made it more difficult for you. We've made it tougher on you, so we need to apologize. But the surgery has made it tougher. But you need to do this because if you think it's tough occasionally eating some lactate with your milk, have a kidney stone. Anybody had a kidney stone? Okay, I have, and I'll just tell you, it hurts like a, you know, there's a new TV show, Blank, Bleep, my father said. So, kidney stones hurt like bleep. So, you don't want them. So, a little lactate, as opposed to having kidney stones, definitely do that. Okay, now something else very interesting. As you may know, there's a lot of research on good bacteria. Back in the past, Doctors and researchers all looked at just bad bacteria. We know bad bacteria. Bad bacteria. 
the bacteria for tuberculosis, Mycobacterium strep, streptococcus, bad bacteria, staphylococcus, bad bacteria, Escherichia coli, that's the bad bacteria that was in the beef at the Jack in the Box restaurants where the people, the kids died, okay? So there's lots of bad bacteria, but it turns out we're also full of lots of good bacteria. And there is a bacteria inside of us that metabolizes oxalate. Okay, and there, I've got the research uh, of this up on our pages you can look at. And people who get kidney stones often have lower amounts of that good bacteria. And people who don't get kidney stones have lots more of that good bacteria. So right now, researchers are looking at feeding people that good bacteria. But that's still not available to you and I right this moment. But other research in mice has shown if you give the bacteria that makes yogurt, lactobacillus, to mice that have oxalate kidney stones, it can help decrease the release of oxalate in the urine and then theoretically decrease the risk of kidney stones. So remember where I said eat yogurt? And we said eat yogurt because it had dietary calcium. You also may want to eat yogurt because that bacteria, the lactobacillus, may help protect you from extra oxalate in the urine and may help protect you from kidney stones. So the short answer is eat yogurt. Finally, there's research on some medicines you could take. Let's suppose you do all those things religiously, which most of my patients who get kidney stones just have forgotten those things. They're not, not really paying attention. They're not bad people. They just have, you know, gotten off and forgot about those things. And um, we need to remind them. That's what we hope we're doing with this video. Pay attention because you can get kidney stones. Not just if you have my surgery, but anybody can. But there are also some medicines that you can use and some other tricks. How about orange juice? Well, it turns out orange juice has a chemical in it called citrate. Citrate in the urine can bind calcium instead of binding it to oxalate. And so studies have shown that orange juice can help protect you from kidney stones. And also, do you guys remember the orange juice test? Okay. The orange juice test means every morning we'd like our patients, when they wake up, to drink a glass of orange juice. Why? Because our biggest complication that we fear the most is an ulcer or gastritis, and that very acidic orange juice will often burn if you've got an ulcer. And so if you drink orange juice in the morning and it burns, call me. If it doesn't burn, then give thanks because you're trying to protect yourself from kidney stones and you have had some orange juice, which should help with that. So orange juice every morning for the orange juice test and to protect against kidney stones we think is a good idea. There's another medicine that's very common. It's got kind of a big name called hydrochlorothiazide. Hydrochlorothiazide. It's a diuretic often used for high blood pressure. And that has been shown to decrease oxalate and uh, decrease oxalate stones. And so if you get in that situation, you might want to talk to me or your urologist about some tips and pointers about different kinds of medicines. So try and kind of end this long video, not want to talk too long, and say kidney stones are common. They're common in people who do and those who don't have the MGB. There's some common, simple, easy to do kind of things to do to protect against them, which you should do. And there are some more medical type things you can do. Uh, they can be tremendously painful and they can be dangerous, so let's be careful out there.